Today I'm going to give you a little demonstration of what it looks like inside a mechanical calculator. The two calculators you see in front of you are on the left. We have the Marchant EEG9 from 1927 and on the right we have the Brunsviga Model A which was originally released in 1894 and manufactured all the way up into the 1920s. So I'm going to take the covers off of these and give you a little demonstration of what's inside them and a little idea of how they work. So I removed the covers from the Brunsviga Model A. Up here are the pinwheel levers. So these slide down and you can see that as I slide these, these pins here pop out. That is what determines the number enters. So when you slide this one position, one pin on the back pops out. When you slide two positions, there are now two pins popped out on the back. So if I can turn this around a little bit so you can see. So there are two pins popped out here. If I slide this the third position, and it's probably locked now because yeah, see that locks when you start rotating. If I the third position, there will now be three pins out. And if I set it all the way down to nine, all nine pins pop out and drive the intermediate gears down here, which drive the digit gears down here. This level here clears the machine. Um, I believe there are pins on the inside of each of these wheels. When you rotate this, it grabs onto the pins and pulls all the numbers back to zero. So for example, if this is out one position, so rotate all the way around until it finds the pin and pull it back to zero. If this is, and then, let's see if I can rotate this one place here. Well, this is in the nines position, it grabs it immediately. And rotates it back to zero. Over here is the counter. This works on a similar principle. It just rotates it back to zero when you want to clear it. These pins here are for carry. Um, if this is, say this is a nine, when I want to add one, it will then activate this next wheel. When this carries over, it will push this pin out, which will drive this little pin here over into this gear, which will turn the next wheel one position. Like that. So you saw when I turned it, this little pin popped out, and then that pushed this pin over here to drive this. And after that happened, then this uh, cam here pushed this pin back in. I'll just do that one more time. So you can all see. So I've added nine in. I want to add one. So you see now this popped out and that little tooth got pushed over to drive that. And now they can push this back down. The last basic part of this machine is this level over here clears the setting levers. So when you turn this, Notice all these levers go back up to zero. Uh, some things over here are to do with timing, especially this wheel here has to do with locking. So if I turn this halfway, I can't go backwards. This locks it. To undo that, if I want to go backwards, if I've made a mistake here and don't want to enter what I've just put in, I pull this lever and then I can go backwards. Uh, a final thing here is this. This is a lock. As you can see, it locks in. So that this doesn't move when you want to set the levers. If this was unlocked, and you were to set the lever, you just turn the whole thing. So that is about it for the Brunsviga Model A. I will now show you the Marchant EEG9. Okay, so I removed this cover and this cover 
from the margin. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention earlier is that both of these are pinwheel calculators. And the reason they're called that is because as we saw on the Brunsviga, Viga, as you rotate the setting pin around, different pins stick out and it looks like a pinwheel. Um, this margin, however, is a modified pinwheel, which means that instead of as you set a different number of pins sticking out, um, on the back here is kind of like a half ring gear with a set number of pins, but it's retracted so that when this spins around, the half ring gear will slide past these intermediate gears and not change anything. However, when you set it to something, that determines when this will pop out and activate. So for example, if you set it to one, um, eight of the pins on this half ring will miss, but then this will elevate and activate the last pin to, to engage with the intermediate wheel here. If you set it to nine, then as this rotates around, it will pop out and all nine pins will engage with this intermediate gear here. But I saw the same idea. The varying number of pins as this drum rotates determines what number is entered on the digits here. The advantage of the margin though is that it's electric for one thing and it has automatic, well mostly automatic multiplication and division. This back here is a large induction motor and if we activate some things here like the carriage shift So I'll do a little operation. As you can see, as I type in here, these the sliders move. Uh, the case has a little window that's across here, so you can see what's entered. So there's zero, 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 and three, five. Now, if I have this latched down, this add key, this will clear every time I do an addition. So now I have thirty-five in there. I can do some more. And as you can see, each time this drum rotates around and the counter goes up one place. I can also clear. I need this engage this mechanism over here. So I will set this up to do a division and then I will move the camera around so you can see everything that goes on because there's a lot of gears in the back here as well. So I'll set this up for division. So I'll do it again real quick here. Okay, so I'm starting the division now. So that is the demonstration of inside the Martian EEG9 and inside the Bruns Vega Model A. So I hope you enjoy taking a look at all of the interesting individual mechanical parts that make these calculators work.